Hey y'all, so it's a little bit later in the afternoon on Sunday and I think I'm going to go ahead and release my little queen. I actually kind of miss the days of releasing butterflies from my inside enclosures. Well, maybe one or two will still find their way in. Y'all, I think I see a spice bush, another one, caterpillar. Oh, yes. You see, it's getting ready to fold that leaf over and make its little tent. Let me go get my trimmers and bring this cutting in. Actually, you know what's nice about my enclosure in my enclosure is I have a little sassafras tree in a pot. So I don't have to take a whole cutting. I can just cut off the little leaf chunk that he's on and then lay it in. Oh look, I wonder if there's another one in there. All right, I'm gonna explore, see how many I find. Hey y'all, there's a storm rolling in. So my fun time in the garden has come to an end for the moment. You know, maybe it'll blow over in this evening. I can come back out again, but I did a lot of seed planting. And like my one last thing is I saw one giant swallowtail egg out there on my wild lime and I just went to get the cutting and I found more eggs and three already hatched babies. So I brought them all in. I'm going to hook them up with their floral tubes and keep them in the inside nursery till they get a little bigger and then I'll put them out in the enclosure in the haven because that's how we're doing it now. <laughs> so these two little bundles all have eggs and then this final one has the babies. I'll turn it slow, see if you can spot them. I'm going to set them right in there. And we're all set. My eggs on um, this milkweed still have not um, hatched. But I did find one tiny little baby caterpillar out in the garden and I brought it in. And put it on this milkweed also. It's a tiny, tiny baby. There you can see it. Whoop. You can see it right there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go in and have dinner and get cleaned up a little. So this might be it for today, or maybe I'll be back. I don't know. We'll see. Weather will tell. But I just want to say, tomorrow's Monday is my last full week teaching and then the next week and we have a long weekend because Memorial Day and then we have Tuesday and Wednesday is an early release day and we're done. Can you see me jumping up and down inside like I mean I love my students I love my job for the most part that summer break is summer break it's just me and my garden day after day after day after day whenever I want I am so excited Hey y'all, it is Monday evening and um, we just had a really, really nice downpour after work, but it delayed my ability to go out exploring. And when I was just out there, <laughs> my swallowtails adding everything down, they were all in the stems. So I had another pot out there and I sat there and I transferred them. They're so cute. One by one onto the new plant. Here is the stripped down and eaten plant. <laughs> and now it's out in the main section of the enclosure, ready to regrow. <laughs> and here is the new plant in the enclosure, which I have a feeling I'll be replacing 
tomorrow, fortunately, I have some more bronze fennel at the ready. Look at this one over there on the wild lime. What are you doing? There's two of them there. We'll just put him right here. There you go. Now this guy. I think these guys went over here because they're out of food. Uh, I want them to know that there is more food over here. Not on my finger. There you go. He's... Why? <laughs> you put them on the thing they want most and they decide they want to stay with you. Okay. He just wants a little camera time. Now will you go? Now will you go on the funnel? Yeah. There. And look who's sitting right back there watching it all. Look how big that giant swallowtail caterpillar has gotten. You can see one of the smaller ones I brought in yesterday. And I found the other chrysalis to the other um, Spicebush Swallowtail. Is it? Well, wait, no. Yes, right down here. See it? Oh my gosh, you guys, you see there's another one back there on the wild lime. And then look at this one going up the stem. I'm just going to let them be and if they want to find their way back to their host plant, they can. I don't know, maybe they're getting ready to do their big purge and pupate. This is just the best fun coming out here and watching them. Here you can see what my garden looks like on a cloudy, stormy day. But we sure do need the rain. So I am not complaining in the new. My plants are all going to be growing, growing, growing. Here's that swamp milkweed bed that I cleared out and uh, you can see the swamp milkweed is making its way back. It's still not as tall and full as I think it should be but something's been eating it and I'm not necessarily sure. It's just a caterpillar. My little sneaky snacker <laughs> might be back. We're just not going to talk about that. So I want you to look at the color variations of this swamp milkweed to this one. Do you see the depth of green compared to this? Well, this one was planted 
over in that garden over there. And remember at the beginning of the season, I said I was going to leave it be. But I was noticing how its leaves were looking lighter and not as rich and deep green as the milkweed that was in the wetland section. So I dug it up and moved it over here because I can really see that that might make a difference. So we'll keep watching and checking. Hey y'all, it's Tuesday after work and I was just checking on that little cutting of swamp milkweed that I put in the enclosure that had like five eggs on it and only one egg was viable. So I have one tiny baby and then I have that other one that I found that I put in there. So I'm going to go look for another little piece of swamp milkweed that might have some eggs on it to bring in. I've got my Felco pruners ready to go and get a cutting. And one of my favorite things to do in my garden is hunt for caterpillars. I mean, I guess you would imagine that's true having watched my channel for some time, but I don't know that I've ever outrightly said that that's one of my favorite parts of having a butterfly garden. So when I search for eggs, I'll just like grab the tip and kind of tilt and you can see there's some eggs on there. There's like three on that side. And then I'll tilt to the other side. There's another egg up at the top there. Oh, yeah, there's some on that side also. So that would be a good cutting. The thing with this plant is I don't want to take too much of it off. Because I want to leave some leaves and I want it to keep growing and grow back. Um, I have this other one right here. And I'll just do the tilt. See, I don't see any eggs on that one. Okay. Let me tilt this one. Mm, there's a few eggs. So I think I will go ahead and take this cutting here let me see how far down do I want to go it looks like this leaf layer here is where the lowest eggs are so I'm just gonna snip just below that and then I will go put this in a floral tube there's a lot of eggs on this one All right, and that's how I harvest some more monarch caterpillar eggs. And now that I took the cut from there, it'll send out shoots, possibly on both sides of this uh, cutting. So instead of just being one stem, maybe I'll get two more out of it. So regularly trimming back your milkweed isn't such a bad idea. But you'd want to at least let some of them grow so they can set the seeds and flower and do the whole seed pod thing. So you can collect seeds for so you can collect seeds for next year's batch. Of milkweed. Well, here we are again next day and they have the eastern 
black solitaire caterpillars have completely <laughs> munched down the fennel that I put in here. Look at this guy here. He just needs to go and pupate already. He is getting ready to do his big purge. <laughs> Look at his belly. <laughs> so cute. So, I have brought another pot of, um, I believe it's fennel, and I'm going to swap out that one for this one. I think what I'll do is I'll just take little cuttings of all the stems they're on and just put the stems on the new plant instead of picking off each caterpillar one by one because this could stand to be trimmed back. Now look what's going on back there. There's an Eastern Black Swallowtail caterpillar on the wild lime. And there's also a giant swallowtail caterpillar wondering who this intruder is on his host plant. <laughs> Alright, everybody has moved on. You can see I just kind of um, trimmed off the little stem they were on and just kind of laid it on top of the new fennel and then they'll eventually crawl off and spread about like these ones are doing. And then this one was J hanging. So I cut its stem and I'm going to go put it in my indoor enclosure and then it can just uh, pupate in there and then get moved to a pocket protector. All of these guys should be pupating soon. And even though I have a lot of um, bronze fennel growing out in pots in my garden. They're really big pots. So I think what I'm going to do oh God, cute, is I'm probably going to go on Joyful Butterfly and if they have them in stock, order a few more bronze fennel plants just to have in pots as backup. I've also got some bronze fennel that I grew from seed but it's not quite big enough to sustain a bunch of caterpillars. Yeah, she just laid eggs. See the little couple of yellow? Mm-hmm. See her long wing eggs. Now you know, you know, I'm going to take that cutting and bring it in. Now look how my Stokes Aster Bloom is coming along. There's another one popping out beside it. Y'all, just for fun, look, here's some of these sennas that we collected seeds from in the last video that are popped open. I'm just going to go ahead and let them fall. Y'all, the sun just popped out, and so did this butterfly.